What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to compute the Collet sequence in Python using multiple different approaches. So let us get right into it. All right, now for those of you who don't know what a Collet sequence is, the idea is quite simple. We start with some number n, let's say n is five, and then we use two basic rules to update n until we terminate, until we reach one. The two basic rules are if n is even, we update n to be n divided by two. So we have the value of n. On the other hand, if n is odd, what we do is we update n to be three times n plus one. This is the second branch, so to say. And the Collet's conjecture now says that for every starting point n, this sequence will be finite. It will terminate at some point. This is the conjecture. And up until this point, no one has ever found a number for which this is not the case. So up until this point in time, every number that was ever tried at some point reaches one and the sequence terminates. The sequence is of finite length. In this video today, we're going to focus on implementing different ways of calculating the sequence or one way of calculating the sequence and two different ways of calculating the length of the sequence to find the longest sequences in a given range, for example, uh, as fast as possible. So we're going to explore this a little bit. Now, just as a simple example here, what would happen with five? Five is odd, so we would get as a result three times five plus one, which is 16. 16 is even, so we would get eight, then we would get four, two, and one terminates. Um, and then what would happen with a six, for example, a six is higher, but not always is a larger number, a longer sequence. So for example, you can obviously see if I start with 16, I immediately get to eight, four, and two and one. So five is a longer sequence than 16. However, six is longer because when I go with six, I get uh, three, three is odd. So I get three times three, which is nine plus one is 10. And then 10 is even, so it's divided by two, we get five, and then we get the rest of this sequence here. So it's not obvious which one is going to be longer, um, unless you try. So this is what we're going to implement in this video today. And we're going to do all of this in core Python. So let's start with an iterative solution with a basic solution to just compute the sequence itself. It's uh, very straightforward, just putting into code what I just showed you. We're going to say that we have a function call it sequence, my term is laggy, sequence, iterative, given a starting point n. And what we do now is we say basically the sequence itself is going to be a sequence that starts with n, since it's the first element. And then we're going to say while n does not reach one. So while there is no termination, we're going to say if n is divisible by two, we're going to say n is equal to n, or maybe we could say just, uh, or actually I want to say n is equal to n floor division two, because I don't want to have floating point numbers, uh, numbers. And otherwise, if it's not divisible by two, I'm just going to say three times n plus one. And of course, in the end, we want to add this element to the sequence. So sequence append n. And in the end, we return the sequence. So let's give it a try print call it sequence iterative five. And you can see we get five, 16, eight, four, two, one, let's try with six. We get what I just showed you. Let's try with 16. There you go. And if I try something like 200 or 2003, let's go with that. It's a longer sequence, as you can see. So this is the implementation for the sequence. Now, what we can also do instead of calculating the sequence itself, maybe our goal is not to compute all the different sequences we want to find in the range of ends. So let's say I want to test all ends from one to a large number like 10 million or something. I want to see which sequence has the longest or which input produces the longest sequence. Um, so in this case, what I would do is I would not actually compute the sequence itself, I would just count the values, I would just count the elements. So I could say counter equals zero. So in this case, the function would be call its length iterative, uh, counter equals zero, and instead of appending, I can just say counter plus equals one, or actually, we should start with one, and then return counter. So in this case here, let's replace this with length, we would get the length of the resulting sequence. So that is the iterative approach. Now we can see how well it performs by running the following 
uh, loop, we can say for i in range, we start at one because zero uh, doesn't work. And we go up until let me just see what number I chose here. I think it's actually 10 million. Like this. Um, and then what we do is we just say, we can keep track of the longest. Let's start with zero and longest i is going to be none. Or actually, we can go with zero. Or actually with one. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to say if the call its length iterative of i is larger than longest, then we're going to update this or actually we should maybe say length is equal to call its length iterative of i and then we should say if the length is larger than longest, then longest is going to be set to length and longest i is going to be set to i. And in the end, we can get the result. So print i and print the length of i. So actually longest and longest i. Uh, we can actually remove a zero to get a pretty fast result. Somewhat. Okay, actually, I think maybe we just count the zeros here. I actually use 10 million. Okay. Uh, but you can see we get this result here. And it says that the best i to choose or the best n to choose we could say uh, is this one and it has a length of 525. So let me add a zero here. Let's see how long it takes. We can actually time this we can say start is equal to time time. I can copy this I can add this to the end I can say n equals time time. And then I can print end minus start for this, of course, I should import time. And when I run this now, this should probably take around, I don't know, eight to 10 seconds. If I chose the correct number of zeros, I think so I, I chose 10 million should actually work, but it takes some time, as you can see, if it takes too long, we're just going to go with one less zero. But the idea now is can we speed that up? Can we speed this process up by using a recursive approach? Can we implement this function as a recursive function and produce um, better results? Now this seems to take too long. Let me just remove a zero. We're going to run this again. Maybe I actually tried with one less zero. Um, but we can see it takes some time probably yeah, 8.3 seconds here until we get a result. And that result is accurate, but it takes some time. So can we write this as an as a recursive function? Uh, we can try, we can say, call it length recursive. But we're going to see also that there's a problem that we need to solve. Uh, because there is a recursion depth limit. And even if you Im increase it with sys and you you basically set it to be higher, it still is not enough to actually be useful here. So we're going to find a different approach here. But the recursive logic is quite simple. If n is equal to one, return one, else, if n is divisible by two, return one plus recursive call to the recursive function n divided by two. And otherwise return one plus recursive call three times n plus one. So basically, every time we add plus one plus one plus one, in the base case, we return one as well. So we just count how many uh, recursive calls we have here. Um, that is a simple function. Now you can see that if I change this to be the recursive function, we're going to get a problem. At least I think so. Because at some point, I suspect we're going to get a uh, recursion depth problem. Maybe it will take some time. No, actually, we get a result. Okay. Um, maybe the number is not high enough, maybe we can actually uh, cause a problem. Let me just see if I can say call it length recursive, like this. Actually, I should comment this out first. It says one and zero. Oh, no. This is why it says one and zero. Okay, so actually, it computes it quite quickly. But if I provide something like this, 
yeah, okay, we get the maximum recursion depth. Now, you can see it takes quite a large number to get to this point. Um, but if you want to explore large values, this is probably uh, an issue. Now, what we can do not only to make this less of a problem, even though it's not going to solve it completely, but to massively speed up at least uh, at least this loop here is we can use caching. So basically, this goes into the direction of dynamic programming, because what we can do is uh, think about what this recursive call does, or what this recursive function does. Basically, if I use um, five as a starting value, what I do is I get to uh, what was it, I get to 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. Then when I go to six, what happens is that um, I start with six, I get to three, I get to 10. And then I have to compute again, 5, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. If I already have all of these results cached, I can just know what five will return. In this case, five will give me uh, six. So I can say one plus one plus one. And instead of continuing to call recursively, I can just say one plus one plus one plus six. And I get immediately the result because the result of the call five is still stored. So I don't need to call uh, to make all these recursive calls. If I have ran the function already a couple of times. So yeah, so what we can do here is we can go ahead and say from func tools import LRU cache, which I think is least recently used or something. Um, and we can add this decorator here, LRU cache. Now to go extreme to to go the extreme way, what we're going to do here is we're going to say max size equals none, which basically says that we don't limit this caching in terms of memory. And now what you're going to see is I run this, and I get a very quick result it takes around a second to get the same result that I had before. And I think I can also add a zero and it's not going to take too much longer. It will take longer, but it's not going to be at least I hope so. It's not going to take an extreme amount of time or maybe it is maybe the growth is no, there you go 11 seconds and I get the result here. So you can see that the recursive approach with caching is actually much faster than the iterative approach. And also limits the problem, it doesn't really solve the recursion depth problem, because uh, at some point, you may run into a lot of recursions anyways. But at least you don't have to make as many recursive calls if you have a lot of results cached. So you delay the problem, you could say. But yeah, this is how you can compute call it sequences or the length of call it sequences in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.